definitely want to thank you all of you for coming. This is, um, give you a little background. I had some black brothers that uh, did this for their dad when he turned 80. And people came from all over the country to really pay tribute to him. And I'm thinking, why not do this when somebody's alive? Because you know, you're going to help you up there and let them know type of thing. So that's why we're here. A um, couple things. One, so on 60 Minutes last night, they, this one guy there interviewed says, love is the most important thing in the universe. And when you think about it, it really is, you know. And the love you've given Sandy and just by showing up is, is just so important. But a um, couple stories I've got on Sandy. And then if you've got your story, please come up. Um, we dated on and on. <laughs> I mean, for 30 years. <laughs> but I remember uh, when we first dated, Sandy smoked. And I was trying to get her to quit smoking. Forget about that. And uh, I remember being at a golf outing, and she was, she told me she had stopped smoking. But then I looked in the women's locker room, and there she was with a cigarette, and boy, did she have a guilty look on her face. <laughs> and, uh, and then one other, one other story is, Sandy gave up alcohol how many years ago? 91. 1991. <laughs> but she, she was a drinker. And uh, she tells the story, I don't think we were dating at that time, but she tells the story where uh, uh, she was at a party, and she... Uh, got halfway home and the cop pulled her over and thank God it was a Worthington cop that she probably had sold a house to or something. <laughs> and he says, okay, uh, just get in my car. I'll take you home. I know where you live. He dropped it off. <laughs> but the next day, she didn't know where her car was. <laughs> so she had to call that same cop back <laughs> and, and, and find out where the car, car was. Where's my car? Where's my car? My car? Yeah. Um, let's see. That's that's the uh, there the oh, Sandy next to my mom. She is the biggest backseat driver <laughs> I've ever been, uh, you know, related to. Um, you know, I've only been in Columbus only forty five years, and uh, if you, you get her. She's telling which to take to take a turn right, take a turn left. You know, the the one nice thing is though that she treats everybody like that. <laughs> her, uh, Jean Ann, uh, her sister, they were in Italy, and uh, Sandy was driving. As Jean Ann says, too fast, and Jean Ann was giving directions: take a right, take a left, take a right, take a left. And finally, Jean Ann says to take a right, and Sandy went straight, and. Jeannie and asked her, why did you go straight? He says, because that looks like a, uh, a rental car, too, and I'm going where they are. <laughs> Made no sense at all. They finally got back and got, got to where they really wanted to do. Um, the, uh, let's see, what have we got on other good stories? Oh, Joe Jackson came to visit her uh, yesterday, the day before. And she said he told Joe that she was a little fuzzy brained and Joe says, Yeah, you're a perfect fit for Alan. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. Um, oh I got I gotta tell some stories. When we are uh first date and Harley had these uh cruises and stuff. And uh she got in an argument because I was re with Remax and she got in an argument with Harley saying, Harley said, no, you're not going to take me because it's just I am. And I want guys on the cruise, but boy, we, uh, if you ever go on a cruise, they don't let you take bottled wine in, but they'll let you take box wine in because they can't see it in your luggage. So our, our, that first night of that cruise, we must have had 20 to 30 people in one of those small cabins and a toga party. And uh, that was a lot of fun. But, but then the, a while later, we did a trip to Aruba. And the casino, um, Sandy likes nickel slots, you know. And so we found out where the nickel slots, they're up on the balcony. And uh, we went up there, and we, the first night, we were the only people up there. But Sandy, if she gets 
two cherries, she screamed, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> even though the next one is an orange. <laughs> She's screaming. So the next night, every slot machine up there was full because oh. they thought this is a orange. <laughs> And the third night, they were standing in the <laughs> What I missed was I could have gone down to the, the boss downstairs and say, you bankroll us, we'll bring it to the right. next slot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I definitely missed on that. Um, no, wait, you have to go back to the first story. The first story oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, the total party. Because, uh, uh, the, the first party, uh, and uh, so anyhow, uh, I was saying, we can't take him. We were in the smallest, I, I kid you not, I think, um, I think the bunk was uh, two chairs long. And we had 50 people in there. And we had, uh, and he said, we can't take him. I said, listen, let me tell you something. You pay my bills, I sleep with him. <laughs>
Grace Dunleavy Center uh, a nice story about the history. And Grace was really uh, a mentor to Sandy, you know, all all through her real estate career. And they had so much fun, and they recently went up to Calgary and the Rocky Mountains and stuff, and there's some pictures back on the back that, that relate to that. Um, and there's also some pictures of her dancing. Sandy loves to dance. Now, I always knew if I wanted to meet women, learn how to dance. But Sandy and I got along with that because even uh, – what, three weeks ago at uh, the uh, Dave, Powers. Dave Powers concert, you know, we got up and danced right there. So it's just, a, you know, a neat, neat part of Sandy. Uh, however, she does sometimes drive me crazy. And uh, that's the, the, the best thing about it is that I've, I've discovered CBD oil. I, if your spouse drives you or gets pissed off at something like that, give them some CBD oil. And it makes it mellow out, and it's, it's to me, it's one of the most uh, greatest inventions. I don't know how they buy stock in it, but it's a great invention. You can force it down their throat. Yeah. Um, but here, here's uh, a story that uh, uh, her friend in Florida got that I thought, this is, this epitomizes uh, Sandy. She's always out there. And a friend to almost everybody. This uh, Christine says, after my husband passed, I only knew my immediate neighbors in Stony Brook. And as you know, my son lives in the UK and my daughter in Ohio. My bereavement counselor put me in touch with Sandy, who immediately included me in gatherings and the monthly luncheons. Because of her, I have made strong friendships here that enable me to stay in America, their supporter. I had dinner with her before Thanksgiving and before she returned to Ohio. Thank you, Sandy. That, that's, you know, story. Do any of you kids want to talk about her? I got a few left, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can. Kirby, you have. Let me tell one about I, I love her. Okay, hold on, hold on. She can. Yeah, tell about it. She, she's got this mother of the year in quotes uh, that she talks about. Talk about Two boys are holding hands like this, and I'm, I'm down on the first floor, and there's my daughter with a little pink, little pink uh, a ponytail. She had long hair, territorial hair, and she had a little pink ponytail. And the boys were holding hands like this, and they're looking at her big sister, and she's got her hand on her hip, and she said, "If I told you once, I told you twice, and she twice could not shut up." <laughs> <laughs> and I still, and then you wonder how you. Kids, look at me now. I know I have a. <laughs> <laughs> and they do pay attention. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. Okay. Okay. Well, tell the one about Stu, and you can tell one about her, too. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, uh, okay. What, which one, what, which one was talking about Stu? Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Poor Stuart. So Stuart was a two hour nap. If I took him out and I woke him up, he wouldn't go back to sleep. And and my ex wife and wife, uh, my ex husband was a white glove. So I always had to have the house cleaned up no matter what time I got. I had to have the house cleaned up. So anyhow, yeah, so I took Stuart in, and that was when we had bumpy chairs. We didn't have a carpet, we had bumpy chairs. So Sid is in my daddy's 66 Buick, sound asleep, like this. And then I. So I'm she going in and out, I'm being in and out of the house cleaning while he's sleeping so I can get the house cleaned up. So I get it um, He says, Mommy, I awake now. Can I come home? <laughs> <laughs> Today they would say, it's so you in the can. Tell me about your ex babysitting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Very rarely did I go out and play bridge, okay? Because I 
I knew it was a two hour changing of the diaper rack time. I knew it was another three hours of picking up the house. And so I, I took my, my night for a drug break. And so one night I came home, I opened the front door, there's my ex trying to sleep on the couch. I go upstairs, there's two kids in bed, only for one thing get out, the other one fell asleep, and I'm missing a third kid. I'm missing my early. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my Jesus Christ, what is it? And I'm, I'm going out, I hurt, hurt, hurt. Where's the, oh, I, I don't know, what, 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 I go down the street here at 10.30 at night in the dark. He was playing with these big wheels on a sand, on a sand uh, road. And he's playing, and I picked him up, soaked him wet, got him the whole bit, smooth in bed, and he went to sleep and not me. <laughs> okay. Anybody else got any good stories? Come on. You get, you get. You, most of you here have known her as long as I have. Come on up. Chicken out? No, you're not going to chicken out. Guys, I know you know who I am. I've got that much stuff to say about Patty. 39 years with the best coach. We played competitors, like she said, because she was the S and I was the R of getting an award. But our biggest joy was passing the LRO. We all, we both did it. We loved it. 
But what she didn't tell you about that trip that she convinced you that Alan was going on was that she was walking the beach nude. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy traveled all over the place. Um, it seemed like every time we split up, she was going on. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. It's, uh, she went to China, she went to Africa, went to London, Paris, and, and like I said on her bucket list, she got places, you know, it would take her 10 years to do it. So we got those on the list to do. Um, Anybody else there back there in the peanut gallery? Oh, oh, there you go. excited about it, so she went out and she got this list, and she came back holding the file. She said, I got it, I got it. I said, well, I didn't know you. We were like three of us in the back. She said, boy, that's big, that's great. And so we look at it, and I don't remember the price, but I think it was one oh nine nine. Charleston's average price was about 55 <laughs> <laughs> so, so we didn't want to damper her infinity. <laughs> Sandy, this is at least 50% of the price. And she said, I said, where's your comps? And so she brought out her comps, and she showed, well, here's one on West, West Royal Forest. West Royal Forest. <laughs> <laughs> and it was within the miles, so she thought she was dead on. Now, the great part about the story and why I knew she'd be a successful realtor was that she came back the next day with a $30,000. <laughs> How do you go out and appoint me? Tell a seller, I'm the expert. Here's what it's worth. And, and so, so I said, how did you do that? She said, well, I just told them I made a mistake. And I said, what did they say? And they said, well, we thought you were higher than you could be, but we were the real expert. Like, what was that? We were very, very close on it. And the problem was I was in tears. <laughs> That's when we knew she was good. <laughs>
enthusiasm that you can take to a job, whether it's as a volunteer or real estate or just about anything you want to do, if you're enthusiastic enough, you can be successful. And Sandy, I I, I don't know, we were in, in I had a lot of I had a lot of I had a lot of people believe me. <laughs> I had a lot of people believe me and, and I had a lot of people say, ask questions, ask questions. Oh yeah, and I know people got sick of asking questions. That's how I learned from all you guys. I just kept on asking questions and Jeannie kept on saying, If they have time, they'll help you. If they have time, they'll help you. And that's that's why I've always kept an open door. Very rarely did you ever notice my door closed, but you would always knock, and I'd always find time for you if you needed questions, and I'd always have time to come right back. Come right back. Because that's what it's all about, being kind. A number of years ago when we were, in, we were dating at the time. <laughs> so, I, you know, I did stuff to tell. But, uh, you know, I thought, you know, she was just so successful with her enthusiasm that I said, okay, I need to try this. You know, and rah rah and all this stuff, and that, that kind of stuff. And I tried it for about eight weeks, and, said, and then I realized it ain't me. You know? I, I'm in the business end, not the enthusiasm end. But, but it, it was amazing how Sandy's success was so much on enthusiasm. And uh, with all her clients, and all the clients, my clients don't necessarily love me. I think Sandy's clients really love her. You know? It's that important. But we were role playing, and I was the um, um, missing agent, and Betsy Jack was the uh, uh, seller. So, so, and you know how, how successful she was. And um, so, anyhow, she looked at me. I'm, I'm going through my spiel, and she looked at me. And she said, "I'm getting ready to be a serial." <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
service award for sure because when I think of all the things that you've done um, in this room and in other rooms down at Town Street talk about raising money um, you set the bar you, you taught a committee how to raise money and it's like real estate there's no, there's no alternative to getting in people's faces and asking that right? <laughs> so you don't, you don't not raise money because you didn't ask them asked everybody. And you raised a lot for our pack and 12 pack over here. Thank you.
never um, had committees with Sandy, but I will tell you, she is the shining light. When you're in a, when you go to a, a dinner meeting or a meeting or wherever you are, you see Sandy Shep there. She has a bright light. She's the bright, the ray of light that we all wish we could be. And I will tell you, um, this Stephen Covey does the seven habits of highly effective people. And one of his first habits is think of you after you have passed, what you want people to say and what they're really saying now. And act and do the rest of your life as you would want them to say and not what they might say if you don't think of it on a daily basis. And Sandy, God bless you. You you will have wonderful things in heaven because we all love you. And we just think you are the best shining light in our life. OSU pep band in Script, Ohio. fledging realtor that was struggling to try and get this business going in October 2005 and Sandy Shep was kind enough to take that guy in on this picture here. I found an old business card of Sandy. It says the Shep team on it. <laughs> and so and a lot of you probably don't know that but I was part of Sandy's team until the end of 2009 when I got an offer to be in a satellite office with HER uh, in 2010 that I couldn't pass up. And that was a very hard phone call to make. Herman called me and it was I remember I was down at uh, Vineyard for we were volunteering for a few weeks. Went home with whatever that night. And Jeff, can you help me out? I said, I said, I've got a bit of bad news. I don't think I'm losing the team. And I always look back and say, I wouldn't be here today if Sandy Shep hadn't thrown that olive branch, you know. So you're stuck with me because of Sandy. Blame her. <laughs>
driving back from Massachusetts and put two kids in the car and one of her kids in the car and saying, this kid can do this. And she got pulled her up, pulled her over, and looked in the back seat and there were popcorn balls and crumbs and everything on there. And he says, oh, I'm not going to give you a ticket. You better have no problems. <laughs> And, uh, oh, and there's fine when we were first dating. I wasn't in real estate, but we, well, I must have been in real estate. But we went into a, I went to a convention in Chicago and was staying on the west side. And while I was doing all the stuff, she decided to drive straight to downtown Chicago. And uh, she a guy like her. And she knew she was lost. So she pulled over and, and saw a cop. She pulled over. And the cop says, lady, you and that Mercedes should not be in this location. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the freeway and get out of here. <laughs> How do I get out of here? Because I don't know. It's up that way. <laughs> so, but thanks for coming. I mean, this is this is how things should be at, at uh, tribute services and stuff like that. And be sure and sign the book. And, oh, we got another one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, wait a second. I got that. Thanks a bunch for coming. I certainly appreciate it.